Hi, I'm Phyllis, southernfrugal.com. We're going to make uh, a 1950s meal using Armor Treat. We had that about once a week when I was growing up in the 50s. I'm going to show you how my mother fixed it. But first, we're going to make what mother called whipped cream. And I'm not sure where she got the recipe, maybe a magazine, a neighbor, I'm not really sure. But we're going to have a dessert with this so-called whipped cream on it. So, let me turn the camera way down here. So the way that she made this, she always made it before uh, the meal was cooking because it needs to sit for a while. So we're using four ounces of regular carnation cream. Let me turn that up, whoops, there. Four ounces, so that's roughly half a cup. In fact, it is half a cup because the can weighs a little something. This is a five ounce can. And to that, we're going to add one fourth cup of sugar. Just dump it right in. And then we're going to use the juice of one half lemon. And I'm just going to squeeze that in and hope there are no seeds in it. Oops, there went a seed. I'll have to fish that out later. I can find it. All right, so the juice of one half lemon. And what this is going to do, there's a little seed right there. Uh, what this is going to do is clabber this milk and make it much thicker. So we just want to stir it around. It's already getting thicker. In fact, it gets really thick. Now, I actually like this. And I'll show you what we're going to put this on when the rest of the meal is ready because I've already made the dessert. So we'll just set this aside and let it thicken up. All right, getting back to the meal. Let me move you all up a little bit. All right, so uh, we had the treat, like I said, about once a week. Now, for some reason, I think my mother did not like Spam. She wanted treat or either my daddy wanted treat. I'm not sure. But anyway, this is the original. Now, it did come in the 1950s with a little key on it, and you had to open it up around the side just like you did the corned beef. But this has got a little flip top lid on it. So we're just going to open this up. And then use a knife to get it out in the saucer. So let me move you all up a little bit. There. All right, so we're going to just put a knife in the side of it, get some air in there, and hopefully it will come right out. There you go. Now, this treat has in it both uh, chicken and pork, as I recall. Let me just read the side of it to find the ingredients. They call it lunch and loaf with chicken and pork smoked flavor right up here on the side. Of course, it's all ground up. Now, we never had it for lunch, but my aunt, uh, Sybil, who was Mama's sister, uh, did have it for lunch sometimes. So what we're going to do now is slice this up. And my mother would slice it up into uh, six pieces because for most of the time there were uh, five of us because my younger brother was just a baby and of course he did not eat the treat. So I'm going to pluck it up, slice it up into seven. All right, so I've got some Crisco in the frying pan here. There's what it looks like all sliced up. And there's all kinds of things you can do with treat and spam. Before we do that, let me show you how I'm seasoning the beans. Now this is a can, just a regular uh, 15 ounce can of green beans. And uh, what mother did is she fried fat back out and used a couple of tablespoons of the grease to flavor the green beans. Now what I have found, because you can't really get the kind of fat back that you could get in the 50s, it's got all the nitrates and all that stuff in it but mainly it doesn't taste like it did in the 50s. It was, in the 50s, it was just cured with salt. Now they put the nitrates in it, and somehow or other, it just doesn't taste the same. 
So what I do is use a couple of sprinkles of garlic, like that. And I used to just use some of the light tasting olive oil, just a couple of tablespoons. Now to me, this gives a similar taste to the fat back. You can't really tell that this is uh, garlic in there. I can actually do this with this. So we just let that uh, water boil down a bit. Turn it down on low. And we've also got some potatoes, just cubed potatoes over here. I've already got those on and I'm going to turn the burner up and they should be done at the same time. So now what we're going to do is brown this tree. Now my mother always rolled it in flour. And she never really bought all-purpose flour. She always bought self-rising. So that's what I'm going to do. So I've got my burner on, sort of medium high. And my burner doesn't sit level exactly so. Anyway, so we're just going to roll this in the flour, like so, and we're going to brown it. You know, it's all uh, chicken and pork. I don't recall knowing it was chicken and pork in the past, but this was not my favorite meal, but I did like, like it a little bit, and what I would do because we always had to take out some of everything. You didn't have to take out two or three spoonfuls, but you had to take out some. So usually, when Mother cut the uh, treat into slices, there'd be one piece that would be smaller than the rest. I always made sure I got that smallest piece, because again, this was not my favorite. Well, actually, None of the stuff she fixed out of a can was my favorite. I didn't care for the salmon patties. I, the uh, corned beef was not one of my favorites. And this treat was not one of my favorites. So, But I did like, she also fixed pork chops, of course, fried chicken. We sometimes had fish, because my daddy would uh, catch fish. He had a boat. Him and his friends would go out in the boat and whatever fish they got, that was what we would have. They, he usually didn't go fishing, but maybe one day a week on Saturday or sometimes on Friday after he got home from work. In the summertime, it would still be light, so they would go out fishing. And, they, and what they called, they called them rockfish, but when Mr. Bucky tells me they were really bass, caught in the James River. Now, years later, uh, the James River got so polluted they wouldn't let anyone fish there. Anyway, we'll be back when this treat has browned thoroughly and we'll be almost ready to eat. All right, our meal is ready and I'll show you what that looks like in just a second. But what we're having for dessert is Jello, and I use strawberry Jello and added fruit cocktail. Now, this uh, fruit cocktail contains uh, pear juice, concentrated pear juice as a sweetener. So what I do is go ahead and bring one cup of water to a boil, actually three-fourths of a cup, and uh, then I dissolve the jello and I drain the liquid from this, but the total liquid needs to just be two cups. So I drain the liquid into the measuring cup and then just uh, put ice in it up to the, the one cup uh, mark, so that way you've got two cups of liquid. And of course the ice will make the uh, jello make a lot quicker. And as far as this, the homemade whipped cream, it was a total failure. And I could not figure it out. I thought, well, maybe the lemon juice what didn't have enough acidity in it. That wasn't the case. I think it's the uh, carnation cream has now got some type of preservative in it, dye, potassium, something or other, and uh, it, it didn't get thick at all. So what I did is used regular milk, and I actually added some whipped cream to it and the lemon juice, and that, that did okay. But I'm gonna put, try to put an annotation at the top of it when I was showing y'all how to make it to say this was a failure. So anyway, here's what it looks like. There's the jello with the uh, fruit cocktail. 
and the, it, to me it's better than regular whipped cream because you put that lemon in it and it just makes it taste special. All right, let me let you see the plate, so hold on. All right, so here's the meal, the fried treat. Mr. Bucky's getting two pieces and a buttered uh, corn muffin that was just made from a mix and one biscuit. These are the just cute potatoes with a little salt and butter and the green beans have a little bit of garlic and olive oil, that light tasting. And here's the coleslaw. And of course there's the dessert and our iced tea. So we're ready to eat. Here's my plate. I try to get the thinnest, most brown piece of treat for myself. And I got two biscuits, the potatoes and um, green beans and the coleslaw, and there's my dessert. So we're ready to eat. So again, this sauce was a failure made with the carnation cream, and I think it's because of the preservative in the cream. So I ended up making it with regular uh, whole milk, the lemon juice, the sugar, and then I added some of that ready whip whipped cream to it to thicken it up a little more. Anyway, you know, y'all get to see my failures too. All right, so we will see y'all next time. Bye for now.